This grainy footage was filmed by Russian security services in 1993 and later broadcast by Israeli public TV. It was the biggest cocaine haul in Russian history, just over a ton of the illegal drug. <laughs> Viktor Chetkesev, a top security official in St. Petersburg, subsequently held a news conference hailing a major success. He said the cocaine would be used for medical purposes. It then vanished. A newspaper run by Chetkesev's wife claimed the cocaine was repurposed for medical uses at a secret facility. But the journalist who wrote the story admitted that he was blindfolded at the site and did not report seeing the cocaine. Cherkesov was close to Vladimir Putin, who at that time was head of St. Petersburg's External Relations Committee. They had served in the KGB together, and when Putin became head of its successor organization, the FSB, in 1998, he made Cherkesov his deputy. In a 1996 documentary, Putin acknowledged their close ties when he was asked to second guess how Cherkesov might answer a question. Предположить, как ответил генерал Черкесов, с которым у меня очень хорошие личные отношения, это значит дать ему характеристику. А мне бы не хотелось давать характеристику людям, с которыми я знаком, которых есть определенные положения. The mystery of the missing cocaine has since been the subject of several journalistic investigations and much speculation. In 2015, a KGB defector said Putin had been involved in drug smuggling. He told the British inquiry into the death of former FSB officer Alexander Litvinenko, poisoned with polonium in London in 2006, that Litvinenko had had evidence of Putin's involvement. This has never been proven, but an investigation by RFERL has shone new light on these shadowy events from the early years of Putin's rise to power. As you know, 1991, 1992, Russia was having a big problem. There was a lot of corruptions and there was a lot of problem in Russia and that was more easy to corrupt the customs and, uh, the this is Shemtov Mikhtavi, who served six years in an Israeli prison for helping to smuggle the seized cocaine shipment. He was part of an Israeli gang and has written a book about it. He gave RFERL an exclusive interview in a small town near Tel Aviv. I was come to Holland and there I was uh, uh, look of my one of friend of me and he was uh, asked me to make the deal to send a container of uh, cocaine from uh, Colombia to Russia. Uh, I was supposed to get something like four or five million dollars. Mikhtavi says he carried the paperwork for the cocaine delivery. The drugs were hidden in tins of corned beef allegedly ordered by the mayor's office in St. Petersburg. It's never been proven that the mayor of the city, Anatoly Sobchak, or his deputy, Putin, knew what was really in the consignment. But Mikhtavi says he believes Sobchak did know. I uh, not have evidence for that. But uh, Anatoly Sobchak, he was no. He should get some money for that. To tell you 100% and that, that I cannot for sure. But as you can see, the address, he was to the san sanitary uh, office of the Myers of St. Petersburg. The, this is, was the address uh, where official address in those papers yes. uh, where container should have been arrived. Of course, yes? if, you, uh, if the police uh, of uh, St. Petersburg in Russia have now that file, you can take the books, you can see the papers and you can see the delivery address. Previously unreleased Israeli police files mention another suspect, Oskar Donat, a prominent businessman in St. Petersburg who was arrested but later released due to a lack of evidence. The cocaine was reportedly destined for Donat's private customs terminal, which was registered by the St. Petersburg External Affairs Department shortly after Putin became its chief. 
The files also cite a St. Petersburg driver, Vasily Dijenka, who was hired by one of Mihtavi's accomplices. When we tracked him down, he did not want to be interviewed on camera, but did say this. Company directors visited Donat at a hotel every day. They brought him cases stuffed with cash. Even Sobchak visited him. He also invited Sobchak. Everyone was for sale in those days. Donat didn't have just one car, he had several. He travelled with bodyguards. The cops protected him. Donat said publicly that he discussed business projects with Sobchak. Both men have since died, while Putin has gone on to bigger things. During his first term in office, he appointed Cherkesov as Russia's top counter-narcotics official. Back at that 1993 news conference, Cherkesov said there would be a trial connected to the case. This might have shed more light on the mystery surrounding the cocaine, but the trial never happened. We gave a large amount of material in Israel. They were as part of this investigation, RFERL approached the FSB to seek answers to some of the many questions surrounding the case. The FSB did not respond. Likewise, Sobchak's widow, Russian lawmaker Lyudmila Narusova, did not respond to our request for comment. <laughs>